what was life like during the war? Okay, the thing is that a child, especially a little child, um, you remember things that have happened to you and it's, it's because of war. But essentially, you're not an adult, so you don't realize the scope of it. You get clues from your parents. Um, I remember one day, my father was home, which he very rarely was. He was in the so-called fire service, um, which meant that he saw hellish things. And um, he was home, and for some reason I was in my parents' bedroom. And he took out a skirt um, on the hanger and he said, you see how small that is? That's because your mother doesn't eat and she gives the food to you. He was earning very little money. He had wanted to be a pilot, but he had had rheumatic fever three times, which they would never let happen today. And so he had a bad heart and they wouldn't let him fly planes. So he wanted to do something for the war effort. So he joined the fire service and they cleaned up after bombing. So what else was going on in your family? What was the rest of your family like? I had a sister who was two years older and I still have her. And, um, you know, it was a very uh, later, I mean, I'm looking at it through, the, through my eyes of subsequent years and realize how crazy a family it was. Um, which is not part of the war. My father was Jewish, um, but not practicing. He was culturally Jewish, and my mother was an anti-Semite and a peasant. He was from middle-class people. So it, how they got together is just, well, they, my father wasn't home much. Certainly during the war he wasn't, because the job took up his time. And what was life like with an anti-Semitic mother and a Jewish father? Well, that during the war was not obvious to me because I was extremely young. Um, my mother busied herself. Um, uh, I don't know what was in her mind. There must have been a lot of fear because, you know, a child doesn't have fear. It doesn't realize how bad things are. Um, she must have been aware that, um, as, as all the adults were aware, that they could, uh, we could have had an invasion, and that, um, which is why I told you that story about my mother teaching us um, with the carving knives how to stick a, an adult to the wall. <laughs> because we could have had people drop in and, um, be dropped and uh, create havoc. So can you imagine living with that kind of thought? And as a child, you know, you take it routinely. It never occurred to us that we wouldn't have the strength to pin somebody to the wall with a carving knife. We just did what mum said. Was your family, was your mother religious at all? I know you said your father was. Absolutely not. Not? But I was, we were both sent to Catholic school. And what was your community like? Was there anti-Semitism? Well, it's a rather strange story, no. Um, uh, I think the war was the biggest piece of the pie that we were all experiencing. Um, the thing is that you have to know that we moved every two years. And I in retrospect, as an adult, decided the reason for that was because we were living in middle-class areas. And I think my mother must have thought this out and decided that it would take people two years to realize that my father was Jewish and that she was a peasant. <laughs> so that's why we moved every two years. Did you feel your family was prepared for war? Uh, you see, more than anything, um, one would say that we didn't go into the shelter. We weren't in central London where we had the underground available, where you, know, you see films where you see people sleeping in the underground. Um, uh, we weren't in the centre of town and everybody, we were in the suburbs. And so people, we, everybody had their little shelter. 
inadequate, um, you know, it was sort of a figment of someone's imagination. I know one of the houses we lived in, because remember we moved a lot, the shelter was some kind of primitive structure between the house next door and us, just this little hut thing. And of course we used it as a doll's house, but we didn't use it as a shelter because it just seemed silly. And of course I had asthma so I couldn't uh, get out of bed. So the family would have died had we been bombed. Did you understand what was happening when you were younger? Well, you see, my attention was very much on myself. I had horrendous asthma. Of course, you have a mother who has it. If you've ever seen somebody in the full of a real attack, I mean, maybe that's why I have arm muscles, because I was sitting in bed and pushing myself up as looking for air. And you see, there was no medication for it then. So my life, I was an invalid with, because of asthma, and that's why we didn't go out to the air raid shelter. The whole family didn't go out to the air raid shelter because I would have been not able to. It's hard, I'm such a great ox now. It's hard to believe. But my whole life when I was a child was dominated by that. And there's a connection also to the um, barrage balloons, those were these enormous things, if you saw one you'd recognise the shape, that were over London to protect us from low-flying planes. And um, therefore they were a positive thing, but not for somebody with asthma, <laughs> because I pictured them being shot and then they would come down on top of us and we wouldn't be able to breathe. So I have a lifelong phobia, as does my sister, when we see a barrage balloon or any kind of hot air balloon. Did you feel distance from what was going on or did you feel safe? Did you feel like you were in danger? Well, there were, there were air battles at night and um, when I was well enough to go to school, we saw the result of this. It, I think I told you that it was like looking at a doll's house. You know, a doll's house has a front that you can open and then you see all the different floors of the house. I don't know if they make doll's houses anymore, but when I was little they did, and I had one. And it was, these houses had been bombed, and so you just, the, the wall was totally off, and you saw the different floors. They must have been Victorian houses to have many floors. And um, you intuitively knew what had happened, right. which gave me my phobia against buying anything used. I, you know, all my friends live in clothing that's nearly new or, you know, from thrift shops. And I can't do that because it's that connection back then that these, the people who, whose belongings ended up in thrift shops had been killed. So I never buy anything, and it's not that I'm rich. I never buy anything in a thrift shop. Do you want to tell me the story that you thought of during World War II? What, um, some more experiences that you had during the war? Um, I think I didn't mention being strafed, did I? Being what? Being <laughs> strafed. I don't think you did. No, I mentioned it to you over the phone. I thought you must, your door must have fallen down. I was that young that I was in a pushchair and my sister was two years older so she was going to school and my mum was pushing me and of course it was the time that everybody went to work at, at the same time so we're walking along the North Orbital Road and the planes come strafing the crowd. That's not a word you use today. They, they were shooting us. So my mother <laughs> tossed me into tossed me into the bushes. My sister leaped in and of course everyone else did the same thing. Wow. Can you imagine? I mean, it's not that it leaves this neurotic person, but 
I'm sure that it gives you a, set, a grasp of life that, um, of the fragility of life. I mean, I'm looking back on many years ago, but it has to have an effect when I, I never saw a dead person in the war. But um, it has to, um, the sense that it could happen, has to give you a, a greater desire to have a, a hold on life and to live fully since you have survived it. Do you remember what it was like um, after that event? Did things change in your mind? Was that... You know, I was so young then. Um, I think I was as concerned with my asthma <laughs> as anything else. Did you feel the effects of the war even years after it ended? I remember there are repercussions. I was living in Spain, and we were living on the, um, not on the beach itself, but right next to it in this apartments. And at that time, Spain had discovered tourism. And I remember, this is related, I remember standing in line in a camping supermarket getting something, and in front of me was this massive back, you know, the Spanish are not big. This camping was owned by a German Swiss fellow, Swiss German I should say. And so it was frequented by Germans. And I see this massive back in front of me and I got this panic, this sort of controllable but a panic attack. And you know, it was like a replay of the past. What was your image of the Germans during the war? Did you have, even though you didn't know much Don't about them? forget I was so young. Had I been a teenager, I would have been able to answer that. They were the bad. And my parents probably didn't push the idea that um, we could be particularly vulnerable. Um, because it would just scare us. I never knew about these things. I only know that I was the darkest kid in the school. <laughs> and I'm not so dark. <laughs> so who are you today? What's your current occupation? Um, I've always been an artist. I, I have had uh, better times. This is a bad place to be an artist, by the way unless you have, you're well connected with galleries before you come here, which I wasn't. I came from living in Spain. But I have a very good curriculum vitae. I have murals in New York uh, that I was commissioned to do, graphic murals. How do you think the war impacted your artwork? How do you think it inspired your work? It was because you asked me to do this that I suddenly realized um, I am unlike the people I'm around who are doing art, in this sense that I'm terribly concerned with human rights. And uh, it's manifested in many, many ways uh, in terms of the artworks. Um, but that it has to be from that background, from seeing um, the horrors that could be. Over a lifetime, I have been doing things in, in art, um, not, not always, but very often political and in terms of human rights and that probably is because of going through the war and even although my parents were not intellectuals, didn't talk to us anyway, we were little kids, but um, it gave you a sense of um, of people's rights and the fragility of life. So, as I said, here I am, at this point, I didn't realize until I was talking to you, Daniel, that um, that had given me my subject matter. And that there is, that's one of the other reasons that art is so important uh, to me. And I never meet anybody who feels the way I do. Um, 
because it has it's a permanent permanent thing unless of course it's bombed and destroyed but it's a, a permanent statement about a time and you can't take it away it's it's the truth